1788, the U.S. Constitution is officially adopted by the new nation, when New Hampshire becomes the 19th state to ratify it. The document includes a fugitive slave clause and the three-fifths clause. 1803, the U.S. purchases the Louisiana Territory, the area that would later become Louisiana, Missouri, Arkansas, and Florida. 1817. The American Colonization Society is founded to help free blacks resettle in Africa. 1820. The Missouri Compromise forbids slavery in the Louisiana Territory north of Missouri's southern border. Under its terms, Maine is admitted to the Union as a free state and Missouri as a slave state. 1848. Anti-slavery groups organized the Free Soil Party, a group opposed to the westward expansion of slavery from which the Republican Party would later be born. 1850. The Compromise of 1850 admits California to the Union as a free state, allows the slave states of New Mexico and Utah to be decided by popular sovereignty, and bans the slave trade in D.C. 1857. The U.S. Supreme Court ruling in Dred Scott v. Stanford denies citizens to all slaves, ex-slaves, and descendants of slaves, and denies Congress the right to prohibit slaves in the territory. 1860. Abraham Lincoln is elected to the presidency. 1863. Lincoln issues the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing all slaves in areas of rebellion. 1865. The 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution abolishes slavery throughout the country. Elizabeth Eckford, Jefferson Thomas, Terence Roberts, Carlotta Walls Lanier, Minnie Jean Brown, Gloria Ray Carl Marx, Thelma Mothershed, and Melba Patillo Beals, with Daisy Bates, an American civil rights activist by their side, not only as a teacher, but as a friend. September 4th, 1957. The nine black students attempt to enter Central High, but are turned away by the National Guards who had surrounded the high school September 23rd, 1957. A crowd of a thousand mills around in front of the school. The nine black students go inside through a side door. A white student takes them to the principal's office where they are received their class assignments. When the mobs learn the students are inside, it becomes unruly and the police fear they may be unable to maintain control. The black students are taken out of the school through a side door. Brian Schweger, a tour guide at the Little Rock Central Visitor Center, gives us some insight on what they were doing between September 4th and September 27th. Daisy Bates made sure that those nine students then who would stay the course were getting uh, tutored, were staying on top of their lessons, be right in line with every other white student much to probably the dismay of the teachers who would teach those kids, they probably wanted them to be behind. So during those three weeks, there is anticipation, there is nervousness, there is all this wrangling with the court systems over what the governor is doing. He eventually has to remove the National Guard when Ronald Davies, the federal judge, tells him to stand down. So there is very much a day-to-day, hour-to-hour, moment-to-moment, ever-changing process of this. And those kids probably don't know from day-to-day if they're going to go back the next day, if they're going to make another attempt, what's going to happen. Daisy Bates probably doesn't even know fully uh, until things go. September 25th, 1957. Under escort by Army troops ordered in by President Eisenhower, the nine black students are escorted back into Central High. So they had protection. Uh, they had soldiers. They were still attacked. The amazing thing about it was that, with one exception, that's many Jean, that they endured an entire school year of physical abuse, of verbal abuse, of emotional trauma that, how can you ever fully judge that? You know, emotional trauma doesn't bleed on the outside of bruise. Right. Uh, but I think that they, uh, they had to have put on a brave face and they had to tell themselves not to quit because I'm sure that they all reached a point where they thought, is this worth it? Is this worth uh, the toll it's taking on me 
at such a young age. December 17, 1957. Minnie Jean Brown spills chili on a group of boys and is expelled from the school. May 27, 1958. Ernest Green becomes the first black student to graduate from Central High. Martin Luther King attends the graduation. They're, they're amazing people, they're brave, they're wise beyond their years.